Hello and welcome back to this channel. This is Professor Rajesh Varapte, a book author of 25 plus engineering books. Dear students, today's topic is derivation of Helmholtz equation that is related to uniform plane waves. This is the topic from the subject electromagnetic field theory uh, for the third year ENTC students. First we will discuss, uh, there are different names also. One is, it is Helmholtz equation. It is also called as wave equations for perfect dielectric medium or it is also referred as wave equations for lossless dielectric medium. One and the uh, same things. First we will discuss the definition of uniform plane wave. In a phasor form, a plane wave is defined as a wave for which equiphase, equi means equal, same. Equiphase is a plane. That means if the wave is having equal phase and it is a plane, it is called as a plane wave. If such a plane wave is having equal amplitude, that means if we have equal phase, then it is a plane wave. And if it is having equal amplitude, then it is called as uniform plane wave, abbreviated as UPW. So this is the basic definition of uniform plane wave. Now, Next part is we will derive the equation for uh, Helmholtz uh, form in case of uniform plane waves. The derivation starts with wave equation for free space. Dear students, we have already uh, discussed this wave equations for free space. If you haven't yet watched the video of uh, derivation of wave equations for free space, do watch it. I will provide the link in the description box. So the formula is del square e bar is mu zero epsilon zero mu zero is permeability of free space epsilon zero is permittivity of free space dabba square by dabba t square of e bar e bar is electric field intensity now in case of uh, harmonic variations dabba by dabba t this is one form of uh, expressing the equations in that case dabba by dabba t is replaced by j omega so Wherever dabba by dabba t is there, I will be putting j omega. This term contains dabba by dabba t square. So it becomes j, j square and omega square. So next equation can, can be written as del square e bar is equals to mu 0 epsilon 0 j square omega square e bar. Now remember one identity, mathematical identity j square is equals to minus 1. So if I will put this value j square is equals to minus 1, the next equation can be written as del square e bar is equals to this j square is minus 1. So it becomes minus mu 0 epsilon 0 omega square into e bar. Let us say this is equation number 1. There is one more term which is called as a phase shift beta. Beta is a phase shift whose basic formula is omega under root of mu epsilon. If it is a free space, then mu is mu zero, epsilon is epsilon zero. So this is the basic equation of a phase shift. O omega is called as angular frequency. Look at this term. This term is mu zero, epsilon zero, omega square. I have omega into under root mu zero, epsilon zero is beta. So this term becomes beta square. So I can write it like this, del square e bar is equals to minus beta square e bar. Let us say this is equation number 2. This is called as vector Helmholtz equation. Now, this is not the end of derivation. We have to further simplify this equation. This del is a vector operator. Now, very important consideration. See, there are three parts. One is E bar, electric field intensity. Another is H bar, magnetic field intensity. And third is power or a wave. So, three things, E bar, H bar and motion of wave or power of wave are mutually perpendicular to each other. So, we will consider that the wave or power of the wave is along Z direction. Then, this term delta square del square can be simply written as dabba square by dabba z square because I am considering that wave is along z direction only. It cannot be along all the three directions. What I said, there are three components E bar, H bar and power of wave. 
all the three are mutually perpendicular to each other. E bar, let us say it is along x axis, so it is a x bar, h bar along y axis, it is a y bar, then p bar must be along z axis, that means a z bar. So if I am considering p power of a wave is along only z direction, then del square is dabba square by dabba z square. So let us put this value, so it becomes dabba square by dabba z square of e bar is equals to minus beta square e bar. So what we did, we replaced del square by dabba square by dabba z square. Now e bar is electric field intensity. If we are talking about Cartesian coordinate system, then basic equation of e bar can be written as e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar. Very simple. In Cartesian coordinates, there are three directions x, y and z. Corresponding directions are a x bar, a y bar, a z bar and values, I mean components are e x, e y and e z. So let us put this value of e bar in the equation, in this equation. So it becomes dabba square by dabba z square in the bracket. I am simply putting this value of e bar, e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar is equals to minus beta square e x a x bar plus e y a y bar plus e z a z bar. Now just now we discussed one concept. We are considering that the wave or power of a wave is along z direction. That means e bar and h bar cannot be along z direction. What e x e y e z indicates? e x indicates component of e bar along x, e y component of e bar along y, e z component of e bar along z. Since wave is along z direction, there should not be any e z term e that is electric field can be along x or y but it cannot be along z direction so e z term will not be there that means i will delete these two terms so simply i can write dabba square by dabba z square in the bracket i have skipped e z term so e x a x bar plus e y a y bar is equals to minus beta square e x a x bar plus e y a y bar. E bar can be along x or y. So I am keeping two things, two directions as it is. I have just neglected the direction a z bar. Now equate both sides of these equations. How do you equate it? Very simple. This term, first term has the direction a x bar. Here we have the term related to a x bar that is minus beta square e x. So I can write one equation as dabba square by dabba z square e x is equals to minus beta square e x. This is one equation, say equation number three. Similarly, another equation can be written as dabba square by dabba z square e y, I am considering this term, is equals to minus beta square e y. So these are the two terms, two equations, which I got after equating the like coefficients of both sides. These are basically second order differential equations. See, this we have derived in terms of E. Same thing can be done in terms of H. But uh, at present, these equations 3 and 4 are sufficient, which are in terms of E bar. Uh, I mean EX and EY. Now consider any component. Let us say I am considering component E y. These are differential equations. So solution of differential equation is C1 e raised to minus J beta Z plus C2 e raised to plus J beta Z. This is the standard equation, rather standard solution of differential equations where C1 and C2 are called as constants. Now there is one more important term that you need to use in this derivation, which is called as sinusoidal time variation. I will tell you what is this concept. Sinusoidal time variation means how the calculated wave behaves with respect to a sine wave. 
So if I'm talking about EY, how I got this EY? This is the standard solution of differential equation, second order differential equation. If I want to obtain sinusoidal time variation form, then for any equation, presently I'm talking about EY, it is denoted by the notation EY raised to a symbol of sine wave Z comma T. What this Z indicates? Z indicates the direction of motion of a wave T is change with respect to time. This symbol of sine wave above this EY indicates we are writing, we are generating sinusoidal time variation. Now how to do it? To generate sinusoidal time variation for any equation, multiply that equation by E raise to J omega T. Multiply the corresponding equation by E raise to J omega T and then take real part of that equation. Remember this procedure? So if I want to obtain sinusoidal time variation of this equation, I will be first putting this value of EY as it is C1 E raise to minus J beta Z plus C2 E raise to plus J beta Z. I will multiply it with E raise to J omega T and after that, I want to take its real part. So I will write it like this, real. RE stands for real. I will use one more bracket just for simplicity. So it can be written like this. So what I did, this same equation I wrote over here, it is multiplied with E raised to J omega T and then we are supposed to take the real part. Let us further uh, first simplify this equation. This equation can be written as real part of C1 e raised to minus J beta Z into e raised to J omega T plus C2 e raised to J beta Z into e raised to J omega T. What I did? Simply I have multiplied each term by e raised to J omega T. Let us further simplify this equation. So it becomes C1 e raised to J. I'm I will take J common. So I will write it as omega t minus beta z. Very simple. This term I am, con I am considering first. J is taken common. So omega t minus beta z plus c2 e raised to j omega t plus beta z. Just for the simplicity, I am taking this term first and then j is taken common. So omega t plus j beta z. Now how to calculate real part? A simple trick. Suppose I have the equation e raised to j theta. Mathematically, it is written as cos theta plus j sin theta. This term cos theta is called as real term. The term along with the z is called as imaginary term. What we want? We want only real term. So if the equation is like this, it's a real term. I will write it like this real part of e raised to j theta is equals to cos theta. That means the things are very simple now. Whatever term you have, e raised to j, whatever term, then simply like this, you will have to consider only cosine term of this equation. So, directly I can write this as c1 cos of omega t minus beta z plus c2 cos of omega t plus beta z. So this is the final equation of solution for the perfect dielectric medium. Very simple trick, whenever you are taking a real part, forget about e raised to j term, whatever term is there inside with j, write it with cosine term. So cos of omega t minus beta z plus c2 cos of omega t plus beta z. So as I said, this is the final expression for perfect dielectric. Sometimes the parameters of these equations are expected from the exam point of view. Now there are two important parameters that we will derive. This derivation of parameters is very simple. First parameter is called as velocity of propagation. So first parameter is velocity of propagation. Normal notation of velocity is V. We will be using same notation. Now, out of this equation, consider any term. Let us say I will consider omega t minus beta z term, this term. You can consider any term. 
omega t minus beta z z term and let us say it is a constant term i want to derive equation for velocity of propagation what i will be doing differentiate both sides that is take derivative with respect to time now if you differentiate both sides with respect to time then first term is omega t it is omega only minus beta beta is constant phase shift it is it is written as it is into dz by dt z is a distance so i have written it as it as dz by dt is equals to zero why zero because derivative of constant term is zero now as i said z is a distance so derivative of distance with respect to time a normal term is called as a velocity so this term that is dz by dt this term is called as velocity of propagation denoted by v so simply it becomes omega minus beta v is equals to zero therefore beta v is equals to omega therefore v is equals to omega upon beta now we have just now discussed the equation of beta beta is omega under root of mu epsilon if it is a free space then it becomes mu 0 and epsilon 0 otherwise general notations mu and epsilon so if i will put this value i will get omega upon omega under root of mu epsilon this omega omega gets cancelled if we are deriving the equation for free space then this becomes mu 0 epsilon 0 now very interesting concept value of mu 0 that is permeability of free space is 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7 while value of epsilon 0 permittivity of uh, free space this is permeability of free space is 8.854 into 10 raise to minus 12 if you put these two values in this equation then the answer is 3 into 10 raise to 8 meters per second this is the reason why the speed of light we know that this is the speed of light it is also denoted by c speed of light we know that speed of light is 3 into 10 raise to 8 meters per second this value is obtained because of from this equation now the second parameter this is the velocity of propagation so there are two formulae for velocity of propagation one is omega upon beta if you put the value of beta you will get directly answer 3 into 10 raise to 8 now second parameter related to the wave equation for free space is called as intrinsic impedance the notation in basically intrinsic means inherent internal impedance the notation for intrinsic impedance is eta it is defined as e by h you can also write it as e0 by h0 e0 is constant term related to e bar h0 is constant term related to h bar one more formula for this eta is there which is under root of mu by epsilon same logic if it is a free space i will say for free space it becomes under root of mu 0 upon epsilon 0 if we put values of mu 0 and epsilon 0 then value of eta becomes 377 ohm this is the standard value of intrinsic impedance of the free space which is 377 ohm or it is also expressed as eta is 120 pi so these are the two uh, parameters related to the wave equations for the perfect dielectric medium or related to the wave equations which are called as uh, Helmholtz equations. So dear students that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you very much.